there, welcome to the Arcas project. Today I'm going to look at a differential amplifier. Now this is the discrete components um, differential amplifier, which is more commonly known as a long tail pair. So what am I going to be looking at? What is this circuit? Well, I've got a, a quick diagram here. Look to the camera, it's not very good. Yeah, it, that, that sort of thing. I'm sure there's lots of other slightly alternative versions and diagrams of this uh, long tail pair but the basics of it are is that we've got two transistors and only one resistor connected to the uh, to the emitter so how is that going to work so I'm going to have a look at and see if I can understand it I'm going to start with the whiteboard and quickly go over a, an explanation of uh, what I think I'm going to see on this uh, circuit okay so I've got a uh, little diagram on the whiteboard here hopefully everybody can see that it's a bit of a janky angle unfortunately the lighting in here is a bit rubbish today um, so this is the best angle I could get for the lighting I've got anyway what we've basically got is two transistors one two uh, both NPN transistors and they have a single resistor on the emitter so what I expect to have, and uh, two resistors on the top, obviously you want to control the current on this. Um, now, two outputs, two inputs onto the base. Now, the way I see it is that with this, if I have a signal coming in here and it's going positive, and I've got the same over here that's also going positive, as these transistors turn on, they turn on at the same rate. So this point here, the current that's at this point, stays the same. So what you get on the output will be the same on both sides. So no amplification. Now, if this one was actually going negative, while this one was going positive, what you get is a greater flow of current on this side and it would actually flow keep that steady it would actually flow as far as I'm concerned so there's more current this side and less current this side so the current flow is, is changed so that this side has less gain and this side has higher gain but what you get is a difference and it's that difference in current that allows this to amplify and you see the amplification actually on both sides because there's a difference between the two inputs so that's what I'm going to be looking at if I have a difference in the input how much more gain will I get from the two outputs because here you only have one path for the current on the emitter side and I've biased it up in a sort of traditional class A type biasing on the base for both the transistors. There are other configurations but I just found this seemed to work best for me so that's what I'm going with to try and understand how this circuit is working and if I can get an amplification. So let's get on to the uh, workbench and uh, have a look. So here's my circuit, it's on the breadboard here, it's um, spaghetti junction again, um, there's all bits and wires all over the place but um, basically in here a couple of transistors, the um, biasing resistors to get it to all come in, inputs on the inputs and my outputs over here onto the scope. So um, enough of this uh, breadboard view. That's, uh, not very entertaining um, and uh, let's focus on the uh, scope and the settings and uh, see what we can actually get out of this thing here okay so what we've got here now is I've got the scope set up and my um, function generator set up now the scope here is set to 200 millivolts per division and one millisecond in timing so shouldn't really need to change that I don't think so that should work just fine uh, the um, signal generator is set to one hertz, no, sorry, one kilohertz for both channels and 100 millivolts. So, if I turn the channel on now, 
for the signal generator. They're both on. We see a little bit of a signal coming through. Now I need to actually turn on the actual circuit so that the transistors are properly turned on. And there we go. We have a signal. Now that signal is not very big uh, because at the moment both inputs are in phase. As you can see, there's only looks like there's one signal there, but there is actually two because both traces are on. So if I measure that now and have a look and see what it currently is, let's, um, let's see if we can get this done quickly. Oh, nearly there. It's about that. Get this down. And we're about. Yeah, it's a bit bit janky but it's about 100 it's just over 100 millivolts so there's a tiny bit of gain in there I suppose but then this is just a basic circuit there's no fanciness about this so it's not going to be absolutely spot on but it, it does demonstrate what I'm putting in is what I'm getting out really so you know uh, well let's um, change the phase of the inputs and uh, see what happens so Let's start with going up. So oh, immediately, see, you can immediately see there's, there's a change as I'm starting to change that shift, uh, that phase shift on the uh, input. 30, 40, 50, 60, 70, 80, 90, 100. There's 100 um, degrees shift in the phase. And as you can see, we have a significant difference in amplification, also, obviously, um, a change in the phase shift as it's being um, altered on the function generator 120, 30, 40, 50, 60, 70 and 80 that's out of phase by 180 degrees so that's fully opposite phase um, for the two inputs and yes it doesn't look totally perfect but the um, the signal is there isn't it it is producing a good signal so uh, yeah I'm happy with that I wonder what that is now let's um just change these cursors and see what that gives us the top one uh, I remember we were just over 100 millivolts so we are just under a volt so that's nearly 10 times the output that I'm getting from from the input as it currently is 100 millivolts in nearly a volt out so that's a really big output and all we've done is change the input phase um, so it's out of phase the two inputs are out of phase by 180 degrees from each other and that gives us this much bigger amplification which is brilliant so it does exactly what I thought it would do or well as much as I, I hoped it would do. So let's just change this phase and continue on round until we are at 360 and back to uh, no phase difference at all. And as you can see, as soon as I start to take that back round on the phase shift, 260 now, 70, 80, 90, 300, they're becoming more in phase with each other. And as they become more in phase with each other, that amplification drops off. And eventually, oh, too far, you end up with no phase difference and basically what you've been putting in is what you're getting out so that seems to work just fine that's brilliant I like it, it does exactly what it should do so there you go the long tail pair a uh, differential amplifier it seemed to work for me um, I got out more than I was putting in so it worked as an amplifier and the greater the difference between the two inputs the greater my output and when those inputs were the same I got the same output so yeah it did what I expected to which is brilliant so um, I'm going to have a look at some of the variations and alterations on that circuit because um, I assume that those alterations are there to try and make it a bit more stable a bit more usable for something um, in its basic form it's uh, well I don't know might be able to use it somewhere in some sort of circuit uh, but yeah uh, very useful very simple and um, worked as I expected so there you go Anyway, if you like this video, give me a thumbs up. If you didn't, you know what to do. Subscribe, and all comments are welcome. See you next time.